does ISIS have the ability to shoot down an airliner? Uh, it's unlikely, but I wouldn't rule it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, uh, the reference there is to the Russian airliner, which uh, went down in the Sinai over the weekend. And uh, as promised, we're joined by Ambassador Ido Aharon. He is the longest serving Consul General of Israel in New York City and a 20 year veteran of Israel's foreign service. It's always great to see you, Mr. Ambassador. Great to be here. Thank you for coming. All right, let's start with the, uh, the, the plane. First, we heard that, um, you know, definitely no terrorism involved, at least these were the reports. Then we heard it broke up in midair, and now they're not ruling out terrorism. Uh, is this a concern in your own backyard that possibly, uh, especially when you hear it from James Clapper, that they're not ruling out that ISIS has the ability to do this? Well, regardless of the outcome of this investigation, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll, they will eventually conclude what was the reason uh, for this uh, terrible tragedy. But regardless of this investigation, we are certainly concerned with what is happening in the Sinai Peninsula. It's been for a long time a safe haven for terrorist groups, uh, for criminal elements uh, involved in the trafficking of drugs and uh, human beings and so on. But as far as, uh, you know, if this turns out to be ISIS claimed responsibility, which you expect them to do anyway, if it turned out that they shot down this jetliner, what, what concerns does that raise for, for Israel? I think it should, it should be of concern to every country operating in uh, areas where ISIS is, is active. Um, it means that we will have to uh, continue the, the war against uh, global terrorism. I think it's, of, uh, it's in the best interest of all the countries in the free world. All right, let's, let's move to, uh, to Vladimir Putin. He has now directly involved himself in uh, the Syrian situation with the troops and uh, his presence there and uh, the, the uh, air uh, attacks. And uh, a lot of Americans, some Americans say, hey, maybe this is not such a bad thing because he's killing terrorists. You know, no matter which the terrorists are, Al Qaeda, ISIS, whoever's on whose side, he's killing terrorists. Do, do, does Israel see it that way? Well, we don't have any conflict with, uh, with Russia. Of course, Russia is a great friend of the state of Israel. It's the um, great uh, uh, supporter of Israel. In fact, uh, we see a, an annual steady growth in the number of tourists coming in from Russia to, uh, to enjoy the gems of the state of Israel. Uh, we are concerned uh, with the um, density of forces in such a small area. And so what is required is a uh, great deal of coordination and transparency between the various actors in the Syrian theater. And I think that that was one of the items on the agenda of Prime Minister Netanyahu when he went to meet with uh, President Putin in, um, in Russia five weeks ago. A lot of people thought that might have been a direct result of maybe Russia moving in to fill a, a vacuum uh, in the absence of quote unquote U.S. leadership. But the, the, what, what was the primary m uh, reason for that meeting? The primary reason, first of all, it was a periodical meeting, but the main reason was to make sure that we are on the same page, and I'm sure that the a greater degree of transparency on both sides is going to be safer. All right. You have the attacks, unfortunately, the terror attacks by Palestinians continuing. We had an 80-year-old woman stabbed today or yesterday, and, a, and an elderly man as well, and unfortunately, they're, they're not going away. Um, I, I guess, you know, you could trace this to, uh, to various causes. Uh, I see it as incitement. But does Israel think that this is a, uh, a uh, you know, homegrown terror, so to speak, uh, from, from the Palestinian territories encouraged by the Palestinian Authority? Or are there outside influences, outside governments that are contributing to this uh, atmosphere of, uh, of terror, of, that creates the terror? There's no question that the main contribution is being made by the leadership of the Palestinian Authority and specifically by Mahmoud Abbas, known as Abu, Madin, Abu Mazen, the president of the Palestinian Authority, who has uh, been inciting directly to violence day in and day out. Uh, we know that because the incitement is based on one big lie, and the lie is that Israel is about to change the status quo in, in, in Temple Mount, something that we, we have not done since 1967. We have no intention to begin doing now. Uh, on the contrary, under Israel's rule in Jerusalem, we uh, maintained a complete and absolute freedom of worship for Jews, Muslims, and Christians. So there is no re reason for us to change right. the status quo. We're not interested in doing That's that. That's false information from the Palestinian Authority. Right. Yeah. It's false information from the Palestinian Authority, which is causing a great deal of damage to the Palestinian people, but to the Israelis as well. And, uh, you know, I noticed uh, there was a cartoon out today. And the newest uh, form of incitement, at least from my point of view, is 
uh, Israel's now taking, killing Palestinians and then putting knives next to their bodies uh, to indicate that, that, oh, these were terrorists, but uh, they have free reign on killing Palestinians, and then they plant the knives. I mean, another form of incitement. This was Fatah that put these cartoons out. Absolutely, and the incitement is across the board. You see it in textbooks, you see it in the media, you see it in popular culture, even in music, and certainly in social networks, which is what you just described. You mentioned the media. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism, as, as is always the case in any conflict that Israel's involved in, in my view, you're fighting the enemy that you're fighting, and you're fighting the worldwide media, and, and the U.S. media to a great extent as well. There's been a lot of criticism about s certain outlets in the U.S. media. D can you think of one outlet in particular that, that you believe has uh, been unfair to, uh, to Israel in this country? Well, you know, I... The, the, the question is really not one of fairness. Uh, in my view, it's the ability to understand the complexity of the situation. When you don't have the background, when you don't have the historical knowledge, it's very difficult to understand the complexity of the situation. So people, uh, including journalists, are resorting to a black and white stereotypical picture. Uh, Moshe Dayan, our legendary minister of defense, used to say, that in the fight between the two guys, it's very difficult to convince the spectators that the guy who's holding the club is the nice guy. Right. In other words, just by the fact that we possess the military might, the economic strength, the size. Um, the other, the Palestinians are the underdog in the minds exactly. of the liberal media. The, under, the, the Palestinians are the underdog in the minds of those who are readily emotionally available to identify right. with, the, with the underdog. Iran. You're not happy with the Iran deal, obviously. That's been made clear. Uh, is, is your military option off the table if things get out of hand, if Iran d d changes their tune, or, or, or you see them moving towards a nuclear weapon? Uh, is your finger still on that trigger? Well, I think that right now the main task, not just for Israel, but for all the countries that are involved in the agreement, is to make sure that the Iranians are living up to the agreement. They're, they're implementing it, they're living up to their commitments. And I think, again, it's in the interest of the entire international community to make sure that the Iranians comply with it. Uh, there are some Sunni countries, some, some Arab countries that are concerned about the rise of Iran and the influence in Syria and in the region in general and with this agreement that are working with Israel or, or expressing concern along with it to Israel about the, 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 the threat th that Iran poses. Well, there's no secret that the deal creates new divisions in the Middle East, and Israel finds itself on the same side of the Iranian deal divide such uh, with countries such as uh, Saudi Arabia and the rest of the Gulf countries and so on, uh, certainly Egypt, all the countries that feel threatened by Iran the same way Israel feels threatened by Iran's nuclear ambitions. Um, so obviously, this is not a secret. Uh, the question is how those uh, coalitions will evolve in the future, and this we'll have to wait and see. Mr. Ambassador? Thank you for coming in, and Thank uh, you for having and, me. and best of luck and in, uh, success in, in quelling those uh, the, the, the atmosphere of terror and the terror attacks on Israelis, and our sympathies are with your people. Thank you. All right, folks, we're coming back. The Malzberg panel is next. Susan Fariccio and Hank Scheinkopf will turn the tables to politics when we return. <laughs>